Monthly, we do a webinar on some of the solutions in bulk material handling. One of the biggest problems that we often hear uh, our clients ask about is tracking a belt. So we're going to give you some guidance today. We're going to give you some of the strategies uh, that we have found over the course of 75 years in dealing with conveyor belts on how to track a belt effectively. So we're going to take a dive into why a belt mistracks in the first place. And that, deep, that dive into those items is going to help you kind of remedy some of those things in order to lessen the effects of the belt's likelihood to mistrack. When we're done today, if you implement these tactics, you'll reduce the man hours and the frustrations on correcting belt misalignment. So basically, there are reasons why a belt will mistrack. It doesn't just mistrack naturally. Typically, there are two categories of root causes that a belt could mistrack. And those would be either operating conditions or equipment conditions. So operating conditions would be things you're doing that are causing the belt to mistrack. Equipment conditions, I would define as things you have that are causing the belt to mistrack. You might want to jot this down. All rolling components steer the belt. All rolling components have influence on the belt. In order for a rolling component to steer the belt correctly, it must be clean. So when we allow carry back to build up on return rolls, that tends, that will cause the belt to start to wander. So you want to make sure you have belt scrapers installed. You want to make sure that those belt scrapers are maintained. You want to make sure that they're tensioned properly. And we're always going to recommend a multiple belt cleaning system, which would consist of a primary cleaner with typically a urethane blade and then a secondary cleaner, which definitely should be made of tungsten carbide. So bend pulleys, take up pulleys, carrying idlers, return rollers, they all must be clean. They can't be built up with material. Another operating condition, and this adds to this wildly important statement, is seized rollers. So if you've got seized rollers, and this is a clear indication that that roller was seized. This is a clear indication that that roller is seized. If those rolling components are not rolling, that belt will not operate properly. There's two types of loading conditions that can cause the belt to mistrack. One would be what we call off-center loading, like you see in picture one. In a little less understandable is what we call segregated loading, which would be in picture two. Now, off center loading is pretty self explanatory. It's basically your load material onto one side of the belt, and that load will push that belt up into the carrying idlers, eventually, if it's severe enough, causing spillage. Segregated load is a little bit different. Now, segregated loaded isn't going to be in every industry. Uh, but it's the most common in mining industry. Anytime you're dealing with material that you're taking out of the ground, that material isn't going to be consistent in size until after that equipment's ran through a couple of different crushers. So that run of mine material can have some big, big chunks in it. It'll also be have, it'll also have very fine material in it. What happens with, it, with conveyors is as that material that has big chunks in it and small fines is it, in it, as that material is being conveyed, it's being vibrated. And that vibration that's put into the cargo will cause the fines to sift to the bottom. And then it'll cause the, the big chunks to migrate to the top. So then when you've got a conveyor belt that is, has the big chunks on one side or on the top and small fines on the bottom, 
and that conveyor dumps onto another conveyor that runs at a 90 degree angle. So let's say we're dealing like this, and then I've got another belt running at a 90. What happens is those big chunks that are on the top of the pile will fly out to this outer edge of the belt, and the small finds will drop to this side of the belt, just like we see in that photo. That, that improper distribution of weight can cause the belt to mistrack as well. Another kind of really um, underappreciated reason why a belt mistracks is because maintenance staffs will often improperly adjust any dust skirting. So what happens is maintenance staff um, will see dust or spillage coming out from underneath the skirt board and then they make adjustments down on that skirt board to um, help, help with that spillage. When that skirting becomes unevenly adjusted in that one side of the belt has more drag than the other side of the belt, then the side of the belt that has more drag will tend to move a little bit slower. That can cause a little bit of um, belt mistracking as well. So a real good practice to avoid that problem is to make sure that you're supporting the belt with very closely stacked idlers like you see in picture B. So in picture B, because those idlers are so stacked together, they can't create this excess wear on the skirting and cause that excess drag and then belt mistracking. Don't assume that every one of these problems is going to absolutely positively cause a belt to mistrack. Sometimes they're so insignificant that they may not uh, be that terrible. However, they certainly can contribute to the belt's likelihood to mistrack. Okay, a couple of equipment conditions that will cause a belt to mistrack is anytime you have bent, loose, or misaligned rollers or structure. All rolling components steer the belt in order for a rolling component to steer the belt correctly, it must also be, fill that in, must be aligned. So if I've got rollers that are out of alignment, like I see in photo one, or if I've got structure misalignment, like I see in photo two, then I'm gonna cause that belt to miss track. Okay, so we gotta make sure that all pulleys are aligned. And when I say pulleys aligned, we're really talking specifically about what we refer to as terminal pulleys. All the terminal pulleys must be aligned. So the terminal pulleys on this particular conveyor is gonna mean the tail pulley and the head pulley, but it is also gonna include a snub pulley if there is one, bend pulleys if you have them, and then the take up pulleys. So these six pulleys must be aligned. If those six terminal pulleys aren't aligned, that belt's not gonna track properly. Let's move into some equipment conditions. So we talked, again, we're talking about root causes. We talked about operating conditions or some of the things that you're doing Let's talk about equipment conditions that can cause a belt to mistrack or some of the things you have. One of the most overlooked reasons why a belt mistracks is because of improper splicing and improper belt storage. A lot of facilities, if they're squaring, when they go to cut a belt, if you square off this edge, if you were to set a framing square off this edge, or this edge, those edges may not be straight. It's not uncommon for those edges of a belt to be cut and therefore they might have a little bit of a wave to them. So if you're using the edge of the belt to get a square cut to the belt, 
you'll have what's called a crooked splice. What you need to do is create it, what's called an average center line by measuring half the distance from each side of the belt, striking marks, and then connecting those marks that you've created with a chalk line. That's giving you your average center line square off of that. Okay, another concern that you should be thinking about is camber. What you're seeing here is a curvature in that belt. So if you were to roll that belt out straight, you would want this line from edge to edge to not deviate more than about one inch per 100 feet. If that belt were to deviate more than one inch per 100 feet in length, that belt has camber. What camber is, it's a stretch on one side of the belt, but not the other that can cause the belt to mistrack. And that camber comes from storing the belt improperly. So it's really important that you store belts on a rack like you see in the photo below. What we don't want to do is store a belt on the ground like this. If we store a belt on the ground like you see in this photo, here's the ground, here's my belt, all the weight is on one side of the belt and that's damaging that carcass on that side that creates a elongation to one side of the belt causing the belt to mistrack. Another reason why a belt can mistrack is anytime the belt's cupped. So if we don't have our rolling component touching the belt, it's not gonna steer the belt correctly. We gotta make sure that that rolling component is in contact with the belt. Your belts can cup because they're over tensioned. So if you have too much stretch on that belt, that can cause it to cup. Heat, if you're running hot material, um, if you're running, let's say you're pulling coal off the pile, that smoldering coal, that can cause that belt to cup. If you're running hot material, that can cause the belt to cup. Certain chemicals could cause the belt to cup. There some, can sometimes be a chemical reaction between the chemical that you might be using and the compound of the rubber. That can cause the belts to cup. Um, and then also if you exceed the trough ability or trough angle of the belt. Another reason a belt might not make full contact with uh, a rolling component is what we call junction joint failure. Junction joint failure is kind of, um, some people call it an M belt. And the reason why uh, a lot of guys call it the M belt is because it looks like an M as it approaches the rolling component or a return roll. And you can kind of see that here. So if a belt has junction joint failure, it makes good contact here, here, and here, but you can see the daylight right here. Now, eventually junction joint failure can actually cause damage in the idler junction area of the belt, uh, but you will first see it here. Junction joint failure comes from um, the, the belt being forced into its trough too soon. See, when you take the belt off the tail pulley, the tail pulley's flat, and then you form that belt into its trough. When you do that, you put a lot of stress on the belt. And that stress is okay if there's enough real estate for it to happen. But a lot of design forces that belt into its trough without enough real estate. So when that belt is taken from a flat tail pulley to this fully troughed idler in too short of a distance, that'll cause that junction joint failure. See everybody, thank you.